Hey guys, so uh, thanks and welcome to this video. This will just be a quick video on how to of the motorised extendable trailer which I'm driving towards you guys now. Let's see what's going to happen. Right, I need to try and get round here first. Okay, park her up like this, just a little bit more, oh, there we go. So basically I'm just going to quickly show you guys how you can make your own extendable, or motorised extendable trailer. I will get down here, if I'm right I should be in the video shot now. So basically I'll just uh, take these things off here, for now. So I'll show you the basic trailer itself first. Basically this is my homemade extendable trailer. I hope the camera is focusing alright and you can actually see what I'm trying to show you guys. Because I haven't got a flip screen because I'm filming from a tablet. But anyways guys, as you can see we've got two metal pipes either side of my frame. Then I have in the centre nearly in the centre, but it'll be alright. I have a threaded shaft attached to a motor. This motor actually I've realised is out of a sumo micro crawler from, uh, from Redcat with the gearbox on it. The reason I use this, I pr preferably use this, is because of the reduction on the gearbox. I'm not sure what the reduction is, and I'm not going to find out. But anyways, as you can see we've got a simple frame here where I've basically got at one end I've got the motor with a coupling which you can use from boats joining pieces to the threaded shaft which goes to this piece which is basically like a double plate and in between we have got a nut which is on a 5mm like I say 5mm threaded bar and as you can see here's the nut here's one of the similar nuts I've used which is them through there and as you can see it's basically in between the two plates so whichever way you pull it it's got to push and pull the rear end or front end whichever way you do it you can even make a dump truck like this if you want to make a dump truck you can do it like this as well obviously it's a bit different the way you're going to use this mechanism but in, in, basically you can use a spindle drive like this in any dump trailer or extendable motorised trailer like this so now I'll just quickly plug her in and just show you what she does for some of the new guys that might not have seen the other videos by the way go check out my channel it's quite good fun some of you guys might enjoy it some of you guys might not but that's fine everyone's got their own things and their own choices I'll show you it now extending uh, while it's doing that, I'll just explain some of the things I've used and with the two pipes at the side, what they actually do. Uh, so as you turn here, she's tightening up, but now she's going to extend. So while she's extending, I'll show you what I mean about these pipes here. As you can see here, we've got, I think it's approximately 6mm pipe, which I'll put in 8mm. I think this is 8mm, yeah, so basically what, what's happened here is, I've got one of the bigger tubes, but it's the inner diameter, the smaller tube can fit inside, hopefully I'll be able to show you because I haven't prepared this metal, but as you can see, I can push her in there, and basically that's what's happened here. As you can see, she's extended out pretty much to where I have her. She only goes a few more centimetres. I still need to finish off this switch. It is a three-way switch, which allows you to turn the motor uh, clockwise, and that which it is going now, and anti-clockwise, which to re to retract the rear end of the trailer. So as you can see, we've basically got the tube. I'm going to keep my hand on each tube where it is, so you can. I'm not doing no tricks. So you can see, as you can see, we can slide it inside the other one. And basically that's what's happening here. 
So on this side, I have got the thicker tube, but that doesn't really matter. I can have it on that side. But as I was building along, I, I decided to put it on this end. And at this end, I've got some of this thicker diameter tube again on the end, which I have then put my clamps over, pad clamps, and I fasten it down. But before I completely fasten it down, show you now. I basically drilled a hole through the both both shafts or both pipes to enable them to lock together so it isn't going to pull out and as you can see I've got these little pipe clamps I have attached them over the thicker piece and I've done the same at this end at first when I was thinking about making this in my head and as I was going along making this I thought about just having a big gap here but I thought, well, that isn't very nice, so I placed a plate across this, uh, this uh, forward section to enable when it slides out, you get a, basically a lot nicer, neater finish, and you don't get any gaps. So basically, vehicles can still come on here, whatever vehicles, RC things, whatever. As you can see, it's not finished yet. I'm going to put a plate in here with the switch there, I think. I'm still thinking about that. That's why I haven't finished that, but some of you guys already know. These wheels are just from Weedico, these things, they do the job, they weren't too dear either, they weren't too expensive, these are low loader wheels, and tyres, and basically I've done the same thing for the axles as I've done for these extending tubes, but then I have run the 5mm shaft inside the smallest pipe. Um, if you're wondering how I've made these supports or holders for my axles these are basically caster blocks, dolly wheels you know, you know caster wheels, dolly wheels but you can use for furniture or moving things I took the wheels out basically drilled the little dr shaft that holds the wheels on the plastic wheels drilled them out and there you go cut one end off to make it fit more in line for me how I wanted it to sit and I'm very happy with it so now I'll plug her in again and just make a return. As you can see there, we've just got a three-way switch. One way, off, and on the other way. So I'll just plug her in again. I've basically done this video as well because I got asked to do this on when I showed the motorized video itself. And now I'll just make the trailer return. As you can see, I'll put a forklift truck on there or something. Whatever you want. Just something fun so you can see it moving more. We'll put some more weight maybe here. We've got, some more, we've got a few wheels there. So you can see all the shifting along. Hopefully it'll work. And as you can hear, she starts turning and the torque gets a lot louder. And she is moving. I'll put this here, so you can see the gap is getting smaller. No, I won't actually. I hope you guys can still hear me. So basically, the piece at the back, which has got the threaded bar running through the two plates, is holding the nut in between. Uh, sorry guys, trying to show you guys. But basically, the nut is like this, clamped in between them two plates. But you need to make sure the flat piece can stay on the metal too. As you see, she's pretty much come in now. Now I'll turn her off. She's nice and tight. She's clamped in good. As you can see. And she's quite sturdy. I'll retract it. Extend it out again to show that it's quite sturdy then. Because I didn't do that then. But like I see. So basically you need to make sure this bottom of the nut as well as on a flat like this, on a flat surface, so it enables it not to spin. That's what's happened here, it's basically gripping onto that plate and it's moving this whole nut along the threaded bar. I hope this has been helpful to you guys. If there really is any more questions about how to make this or how to do this, I will try and answer them. Um, it has been very enjoyable to make my own trailer and it has been a lot cheaper. I would just say the approximate cost here, excluding the little motor and gearbox because I already had that lying about, 
It was approximately uh, with the wheels. I got four wheels and four tyres. I would say it was approximately 60 euros, something like that. So as you can hear, she's at her at full reach now. And yeah, she's just as sturdy now, pretty much, as she was just. I've got more flex here than I have there. I need to think something up for this. I have actually brought this in a bit smaller, so it does sit at a more level height. She isn't finished. This is an ongoing project, because I need to make some ramps and lighting but I have been putting some lighting on my uh, MAN to me a truck I've just got a standard light kit which they use in drift vehicles and such things and as you can see I have the DX6i connected up to my beautiful truck so guys um, please tell me what you think I hope it's been an enjoyable video to watch and not too boring, too boring, but I got asked this question of how have I done this and show how to. And basically it is quite simple, like I say, pipe inside another pipe, clamp one end, clamp the other end, you know, two places here, a bit further along. I need to slide it in and out. I've put some more grease on, I actually sanded it out a little bit more. I do do it a little bit more because I think one of my pipes, you know, one is slightly bent which is a shame, so try not to bend your inner pipe because then it will slide a lot harder and then yep, like I've shown you just make sure you clamp the nut in between two pieces of metal as such make sure this bottom piece is flush against a piece of the bottom metal like this so then it doesn't allow it to spin if you really feel you want to and you've got the time or you're making this out of steel you could weld this, if you've got an aluminium welder, you could weld it too, but you need to make sure you've got an aluminium nut then. So anyway guys, as you can see I was just playing about, enjoying myself, weekend. I'd like to say to everyone, go out, enjoy yourselves, enjoy RC or whatever other hobby you may have. And it's not all about having to buy the stuff you've got. Obviously a lot of stuff here is bought, but I've got a 6x6 crawler there. Okay, the wheels and everything are bought, but the idea is for myself. I've chucked everything together from two crawlers. I have got other videos about that. It's got a metal roll cage I've made for it out of cheap, basically it's fr uh, cheap bar brass. But anyway, that's not about the 6x6 crawler. It's about the trailer. So thanks very much, guys. Until the next time, for me as a 69, respect, keep up the good work. Thanks very much.